Okay, today I want to talk about uh, the health benefits of having a cold shower. Now, a cold shower might sound a bit uncomfortable, but the possible benefits derived from getting under a cold shower are very surprising. I was surprised myself to look at some of the research behind this, which I'll try to relay in this short video. But at the onset, I want to uh, also kind of differentiate between having a cold shower and what they call cold water immersion. Cold water immersion basically is dipping yourself like in a tank with uh, very cold water. And uh, it's done for a little bit longer time. It's done for an extended time. The time varies. But for years, it was thought to be a really great recuperation strategy for athletes and anybody involved working out. Uh, the reasoning being that they found that cold water immersion seemed to have a dramatic effect at increasing, I'm sorry, decreasing uh, delayed onset muscle soreness, which is muscle soreness that occurs 40, 48 to 72 hours after exercise, very debilitating. It also interferes with the full rec recuperation between workouts. And these uh, previous studies showed that cold water immersion seemed to be very beneficial in, uh, in reducing this uh, the delayed onset muscle soreness. And also it seemed to help muscle recovery. However, a study in 2015, which was published in the Journal of Physiology, took a closer look at the effect of cold water immersion on muscle growth and came, out, came up with some sobering findings. Basically, to put it in a nutshell, cold water immersion, uh, the formerly highly touted ergogenic recovery technique, was found to blunt muscle gains for up to two days after exposure. In other words, what it did, it, it, uh, the mechanism it involved was apparently cold water immersion somehow interferes dramatically with the activity of what's called satellite cells. Satellite cells are basically muscle stem cells that are involved in muscle recovery and muscle hypertrophy. Every time you kind of uh, injure a muscle fiber, for example, through exercise or some other way, the, uh, the stem cells or satellite cells are activated. They normally lie dormant in the, in the muscle, uh, in a certain part of the muscle. But when the, when the muscle is injured, satellite cells are activated and they work to not only repair muscle, but they also uh, contribute what they call myonuclei, which uh, muscle cells are unique in, in that they can have many myonuclei. But the point being, the more myonuclei, the, the, uh, the greater the level of protein synthesis and the greater the, the possible level of muscle hypertrophy. So the point being cold water immersion is uh, actually completely blunts satellite cell activity. It's horrible. Cold water immersion is one of the worst things they found in the study that the cumulative, cumulative use, in other words, having cold water immersion you know, regularly, let's say after every workout, could considerably slow down gains in muscular size and strength. So my point being, I'm not talking about cold water immersion, which involves an extended time in, uh, in cold water. Rather, I'm talking about cold showers. There's a big difference. A cold shower lasts at the most 10 minutes, usually less than that. So let's talk about it. So a cold shower actually usually involves a water temperature of below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you could get a little bit colder than that, but that's basically uh, what's considered a cold shower. Uh, what's the, some of the benefits? Okay, uh, one of the benefits of, um, of having a cold shower is it increases substances called endorphins. Endorphins are substances produced in the body. They have a pain-killing effect. They also have a tremendous antidepressant effect. Years ago, uh, they, they, used, they noticed that people who uh, ran a lot, or let's say jog, they seem to have very low rates of depression, and they attribute it to increased endorphin flow during the, uh, during the exercise. But later studies, they involved giving drugs that block endorphins, and the runners still showed lower rates of depression. So they found that the actual rates of depression that are lowered during, by exercise are more to do with what they call catecholamine release which are catecholamines and stuff like dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine. When these, th when these things are elevated in the brain, it's almost impossible to be depressed. When they get low, then you can get depressed. But anyway, endorphins still are very good antidepressants, and about 10% of Americans suffer chronic depression. 
Uh, the, of course, some of the biggest, or most widely prescribed pharmaceuticals or drugs are prescribed to treat depression. Uh, but they found that uh, studies, they found that taking a cold shower for maybe even five minutes, two to three times a week, showed in a clinical trial that it had a actual significant effect at reducing depression. It has to do with the speeding up of nerves. When, you, when the cold water hits your skin, apparently the nerve signals to the brain are speeded up, and this somehow modifies neural transmission to the extent that you have uh, much, much less depression. Uh, when you have when you have depression, cold showers work so fast that it's almost like a minor form of electroshock therapy. Electroshock therapy is the extreme way of treating depression. It's for people that are extremely depressed, where the antidepressant drugs don't work. They shock them with electric. Uh, you might have seen this in the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. They showed that, uh, but basically, uh, what it does is it immediately modulates the neurotransmitters in the brain like real fast. And some people, some scientists think that cold showers kind of give you a kind of minor or gentle electroshock therapy that increases the electrical signals to the brain. And, and this leads to increased mental alertness, clarity, and energy levels. Uh, endorphins, uh, of course, uh, this all has to do with the increase in endorphins also. Endorphins are often called happiness hormones because when they're in, when you when you secrete a lot of them, you feel happy and you have a sense of well-being and optimism. Another another advantage of cold showers is it helps to improve metabolism, which anybody who's interested in body fat loss, any athlete, any bodybuilder, obviously wants to do beneficial things for their metabolism. Well, it turns out that uh, cold, taking a cold shower can help because of something called brown adipose tissue or BAT. Uh, bat, uh, brown adipose tissue is, a, is what they call a highly thermogenic tissue because it has large amounts of what they call uncoupling protein 1. I'm not going to get into all the nuances and the physiology involved because that would take another hour, but let's put, put it this way. When you have a lot of brown fat in your body or active brown fat, calories are converted into heat rather than stored as body fat. So having brown fat is an advantage to having better body composition. Now, for years, they thought that, you know, the only humans that had significant amounts of brown adipose tissue were babies. And, they, and the theory was that as you got older, the brown adipose tissue more or less disappeared or just wasn't there anymore. But more, uh, let's say, uh, concise imaging me methods a couple of years ago showed that adults can also have brown uh, uh, brown adipose tissue. It's around the shoulder blades, uh, upper back. It's in various areas of the body. But adults are fully capable of having brown adipose tissue. And as I say, it, it, it actually burns calories. It's called a feudal energy system because the calories aren't being used as en to power, let's say, muscle. They're just being burned up. It's thermogenic. That's thermogenic. Now, it turns out that uh, there's, there's ways of actually stimulating brown adipose tissue, even as an adult. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter because there's a, a, it's very, there's, a, a, there's a lot of different ways. It requires a very in-depth explanation. But suffice to say, one of the easiest ways to stimulate brown adipose tissue in an adult is exposure to cold. Training in a cold atmosphere, uh, it may be, it may, maybe it's uncomfortable, but it actually will stimulate brown adipose fat. So when you're working out, you'll actually burn more fat than normal because of the cold environment. Now, when you take cold showers, you know, especially you hit that upper back shoulder area where the brown fat tends to concentrate, you could actually stimulate brown adipose tissue just from having cold showers. Uh, now, you know, I'm not saying that somebody who has a lot of body fat all they have to do is take cold showers and they're going to get slim. No, it doesn't work like that. If you have a lot of body fat, you're still going to have to diet and exercise. But they found that studies show that taking a cold shower a minimal two to three times a week actually does increase the metabolism. And it can help fight obesity over time. Uh, they don't really know how uh, the, uh, the, the cold showers or the cold water uh, uh, stimulates brown fat. But they think it has to do with... Uh, you know, stimulating certain uh, 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 hormones, uh, probably catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Also, uh, the uh, cold shower seems to have a beneficial effect on the intestinal microbiome,
which is the collection of bacteria, fungi, other organisms in the colon that ha plays a huge role in controlling the metabolism, how you handle uh, carbohydrates, fat, protein, how you handle calories. I just wrote a massive article on the microbiome, especially in relation to physical activity, like people who are involved in exercise and sports. It's going to be coming. It's going to be published in an upcoming issue of my of my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Uh, and another a way that cold showers are really good for your health is it seems to improve uh, circulation. Uh, it, 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 there's a double-edged sword to this because when the cold water hits you, you know, your your blood vessels constrict. Uh, and now somebody who has already pre-existing heart problems. Or, or let's say high blood pressure, you have to be a little bit careful. You know, you probably want to go easy on the cold showers. Try it for like a minute or just a minute, you know, just to get used to it. You don't want to go in there whole hog if you have circulatory problems because it'll cause a minor constriction. Uh, but but what happens is though, when you, when you lower the temperature of one area of the body, it speeds up the delivery of warmer, oxygenated blood to the area yeah it's a body mechanism and uh this speeds up recovery time and some people uh as i said some people may benefit in cold showers as a way to help their blood move through the body more quickly such as people with poor circulation and diabetes that kind of thing so uh so definitely cold showers do have a good effect on circulation uh cold showers also have a surprisingly beneficial effect on, on immune function of course, these days with the COVID-19 pandemic, immunity is in the news all the time. Uh, you know, so anything that you could do to help your immune system is going to be very good. And it, it turns out cold showers can actually uh, can actually help uh, boost immunity. One way is the you see cold water has like a shock effect. It's actually a bit of a it's applying like a quick stress to the body, and when it does that, uh, it stimulates. The, the release of leukocytes, which are immune cells, white blood cells, that help you battle various illnesses, including the colds and the flu. One study even showed that cold showers can make the body more resistant to certain types of cancer. Uh, a, a, a study from the Netherlands showed that people who took cold showers, uh, cold, out of, uh, cold out of work, cold and sick, 29% less than people who didn't take cold showers. Uh, now, what, what about the, as I said, uh, what else? Let me see, uh, what's the best way to, uh, the be a little bit, well, let's talk a little bit, the, the best way to start doing the cold showers. Start by slowly lowering the temperature at the end of a usual shower. Now, if you take a hot shower, at the end of the hot shower, just, you know, turn it to the cold water, uh, just enough to, to, to where you begin to start feeling uncomfortable. Try and stay underneath the water for two to three minutes. Breathing in deeply will, will help decrease the discomfort feeling. And the next time you try this exercise, make the water slightly cold. In other words, attenuate yourself to it. Get used to it gradually. Uh, you know, th then, uh, then after a while, it won't be as uncomfortable. Uh, some of the other benefits of cold showers, if you have, let's say, itchy skin, for some reason, taking a cold shower will actually calm itchy skin. Uh, of course, cold, taking a cold shower in the morning is uh, that, and having a couple of cups of coffee will wake you up like nothing else. Uh, I mentioned increasing circulation. Uh, cold showers will help reduce muscle soreness after a workout, but they will not, un unlike cold immersion, they will not interfere with muscle gains. Uh, some people they say, think that uh, cold showers help your, make your skin and hair look better. Uh, what else can I say about it? Uh, uh, let me see here. They seem to help with blemishes uh, seem, uh, and that type of thing. Well, anyway, that's about it for cold showers. Um, I would say that they're pretty beneficial. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I had the experience recently. I have a, a hot water heater, gas heater. It broke down. And for some reason, uh, it took like eight days to be repaired. And... Uh, I didn't like the idea of taking cold showers. I prefer actually hot showers, but I was forced to take cold showers. And I, be honest with you, I, I did the methods I, I mentioned in this R, in this uh, video. I tried to accl acclimatize myself to it by just taking real short showers. Like the first one was like 30 seconds. I just let the water hit me, and I just jumped out. It was like bullets on my skin. 
but I gradually acclimatized myself to the point where I was taking, I believe was taking about five to seven minute cold showers. And I have to admit, I noticed after I took it, the cold shower, I actually felt more alert and I felt more focused. It's almost like I had cold coffee. It like seemed to open up my brain. And when you consider how it affects brain neurotransmitters like dopamine and, and these other ones, it makes sense that cold showers would actually be good for you in that sense. So again, uh, try cold showers. Uh, you'll be surprised at the benefits that are involved. It's actually good for you, but keep away from cold water immersion, no matter what you read. You know, I mean, I still see articles and, and uh, videos on the internet touting the benefits of cold water immersion. Not if you're involved in weight training not if, or resist, resistance exercise, not if you want to make muscle gains and strength gains. You don't want to get involved in cold water immersion. Again, cold water immersion usually involves dipping your whole body in cold uh, water for 10 minutes or more. Uh, so that is not great for mu that's terrible for muscle gains. It's one of the worst things you could do. So that's about it. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise, science, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, anti-aging research you can use today, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't. I'm not involved in any supplement company. I don't get any kickbacks or pay or anything like that. So I can tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth about supplements. I, I have nothing to lose by telling you the truth. And it's something that I want to know because a lot of supplements out there, quite frankly, are just absolute pure garbage. They don't work at all. And I'll talk about this in my applied metabolics. You won't get this information in other places because most of the information on supplements uh, comes from shills people that are involved in the companies that make the supplements or are paid off by the companies. You know, uh, and these include, by the way, people with advanced degrees, uh, PhDs, MDs. They're like guns for the hire. If you pay them enough money, they'll, they'll tout anything and they'll endorse anything. They can't be trusted just because they have. And uh, I'm not saying they're all like this, but a lot of people with advanced degrees are, are paid off to tout the benefit of certain things that just don't work. I also cover women's health and fitness. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, which exercise work? Which ones don't? All these things are, are, are in applied metabolics. It, it entails my almost 60 years of constant uh, training and educational experience. It's all incorporated in applied metabolics. I don't think anyone could top that. It's 40 to 50 pages every month. It's about the size of an ebook. Uh, and, but I tell you, I try to keep the, write, the writing lively. I w I've been a writer for over 40 years. I know how to write for the public, unlike a lot of these other people that publish uh, digital publications, they're not writers and it shows. I'm not trying to be critical. It's just that, you know, they're writing about science and the information is good that they deliver, but it's very hard to wade through because it's written like in a medical journal style. Unless you're highly motivated, you won't be able to get past a paragraph of this stuff because they, they use a lot of technical terms which they don't explain. And, uh, you know, what can I say? I, you, don't, you won't find that in applied metabolics. Every technical term, if I have to use them, I fully explain it. You don't have to reach for any medical dictionary. Anyone with a sixth grade education or, who, or anyone who's fairly literate uh, will be able to fully understand everything in applied metabolics. When you, uh, when you subscribe, they'll send you an invitation to join my private applied metabolics Facebook page where each day I, I, I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and uh, general health. Uh, also, uh, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where subscribers only, not unsolicited. I don't accept uh, unsolicited questions. Subscribers can ask me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics. Anything else that they're curious about that I can answer, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, what else can I tell you? Let's see. Subscribe today. If I, if I didn't mention the website, www.appliedmetabolics.com. I guarantee you, no matter what your level of education, you will learn something in every single issue of Applied Metabolics. And after about six months of reading it consistently, you'll be kind of an expert yourself. Trust me on this. Just give it a shot. You'll see. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.